Well, good morning. I'd like to welcome you all here to our worship celebration here at First Presbyterian Church of Freeport today. It's very good to see all these faces that we haven't seen for quite a while. Let me say to you, you were missed from our service services during the past few months and I'm, I'm so happy to see you here today and I'm sure I can say this for the pastor of uh, George he's been singing to a very small group of people but I guess that today he will sing out a lot louder now that you're here what I would like to let you know at this time is that even though you weren't here, we've done our best to maintain, keep the church going uh, in your absence. Even though you weren't here, I know that you've been looking at the services on Sunday. Thank God for technology. We were still connected. But I really would like to let you know how much we look forward to seeing you here today. What I would like to also let you know is that Please don't be fearful being here. We've gone to a great extent to put all protocols in place. We've worked very hard at it, and I think this has taken up most of our time over the last couple of months. So please, feel a little at ease. We're all observing the protocols of the church, which I know uh, have been sent out to each and every one of you on more than one occasion. We also are going to ensure that your church is here for you. I'm speaking to those at home. When you get back, we are updating, upgrading things in the church. Um, even, if I, even though as I speak to you now, we'll, we're having an alarm system, new alarm system put into the church come Tuesday morning. The church is good and alive and um, we're moving on and you know what I just want you to know we're patient enough to wait for you until you get to that point that it hits your comfort zone to be back here but in the meantime we'll continue bringing this service to you and we will do this joyfully one other thing that I would like to say is that um, please have your elements at home available readily available for communion because if you haven't been by to pick up the little cup we have with the wafer you can use your bread and whatever juice you have at home it's all still sacred God made it all for us so feel free to use it at the appropriate time with that being said please join me for the prayer Almighty God, we come to you today after being away for the summer season. We also return to your church. We welcome each, and other, each other with open arms. It is a happy day here for us. Father, we also welcome our brothers and sisters that are still homebound with concerns of COVID-19. We pray that you alleviate our fears as we all wrestle with these difficult times. We pray that we can all feel the peace that only you can give. Comfort us all through this unusual experience. Lord, we may ask for your guiding hand as we begin this church year. Many things are not clear to us, so we seek your guidance. We face many challenges both in our lives and within our church. Help us to remain faithful whenever we encounter difficult times. Help us to always remember that you will never forget your children. You are the Good Shepherd that will seek and find your lost sheep even in the darkest of nights. Father, you have made your children in your likeness, but you have made them different at the same time, with different ways of seeing the same thing while pursuing the same objective in your name. 
Help us to accept our differences with love. Help us to make love the cornerstone in everything we pursue. We need it more than ever at this time in our families, in our churches, and in the world. More than ever, Lord, we ask that you help us to be forgiving to the extent that we would like to be forgiven. We sin every day and you forgive. Teach us how to have forgiving hearts. These things we ask in the name above all names, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join me in our opening hymn number 301. All are welcome. We will be singing verse verses 1 through 3. Please see the music and lyrics on page 7 and 8. Join me in the prayer of confession. We are so happy to gather together today, O oh God, to see our church family, to feel the buzz of a new year, and to prayerfully wonder what possibilities are in store for us. We confess that dealing with the coronavirus has caused us all to follow some of our routines. We have missed opportunities to center ourselves in prayer, to serve and to be in community. We can feel ourselves wandering off. Draw us back to you, draw us back to church, and draw us back to the person you are calling us to be. So help us, O God, calm the chaos in our lives Encourage us to center our lives on you. And may our church here be filled with unexpected grace. Amen. Please join me in a moment of silence for peace and grace.
We pray for peace here in our church. We pray for peace here in Freeport. We pray for peace throughout this land. Lord, we pray for peace throughout this land. We also pray for peace throughout this wonderful world that you have given us.
rejoice with Georgia Hu on the news that her daughter Amanda is expecting a baby. Bless them, Lord, keep them safe. And we pray with Andrew and Hope on the death of their friend Allison, 22, due to a sudden stroke. We turn to you, O oh God, in all our prayers, those that we've mentioned out loud and those that are in the depths of our hearts. We pray, God of mercy and grace, in the name of Jesus, who taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning, church family. Ella DeBorg here. Happy Rally Day. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, as we begin this new chapter in our church lives, we are experiencing things that we have not seen before in our lifetime. We feel lost and bewildered many a day. We know that we cannot get through these challenges without faith in you. So we pray that you continue to assure us when we get off track and feel no one cares. So now, let us open our minds and our hearts to receive your precious word. Amen. Amen. Now we'll have a time for not for children only. Children who are present and are watching remotely. <laughs> That's good, Martha. Right there, right that's that's cool. Well, today is rally day. Hooray! Isn't it wonderful that we get to celebrate a new season in our church? And what makes me feel ever so emotional is that to see all your faces and your face, Devin. I haven't seen you in six months. What a wonderful day today is that we God has seen us through this and got us to this point where we can be together and see each other. This COVID time has been a real time of challenge, hasn't it? And uh, it's made us appreciate those who are near and dear to us. It's been, I know for myself, it's made me appreciate my family. I imagine you appreciate your family even more, right, Devin? And all of us here too can say the same thing, that it's been tough. And we've had to really rely on our families to get through this this time. But I want you to know, Devin, that you don't just have one family. You have a church family. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Amen. All around you. you have, as your family supports you and loves you and cares for you, I want you to look around and see all the people around here. They love you. They care for you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Never forget about that. Never forget about that. And so we're going to start off this year on a contest. You and all our youth and children who are watching remotely. Uh, I want, do you know how big your church family is? No. Well, we're going to have a contest because this week that I want you to make a guess how big you think your church family is. And that goes from the same for all you are watching remotely. This is your, this is how gonna go. Think about it and then when you have an answer, I guess, I want you to text the pastor. Text me at 917-327-2119. Text me at this number. Give me your name and your guess and you have until next Saturday. I think the Saturday's the 19th. So the 19th at noon and you have to be 18 or under to participate. <laughs> So, if you guess right, 
or the one who gets the closest answer gets a Duncan gift certificate. Okay? So be thinking about the number you want to, 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 to guess. And remember, one more time, 917-327-2119, pastor's cell phone number. Okay? Great. So let's have a prayer. Lord God, we thank you for the gift of family and all our friends who have gotten us through this, this time of trial and, of course, your love which has supported us. And we thank you for our, especially for our church family, especially today when we finally can gather for, to embrace a new season of uh, worshiping you, glorifying you, and praising you, and supporting each other in love. Bless our children and the youth and the challenges that they're facing with school and other issues and be with them and help them to know how much you care, how much you love them. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Thank you, Devin. You're welcome. <laughs>14 verses 1 through 12. Listen to the word of God. Welcome all the Lord's followers, even those whose faith is weak. Don't criticize them for having beliefs that are different from yours. Some think it is all right to eat anything, while those whose faith is weak will eat only vegetables. But you should not criticize others for eating or for not eating 
After all, God welcomes everyone. What right do you have to criticize someone else's servants? Only their Lord can decide if they are doing right. And the Lord will make sure that they do right. Some of the Lord's followers think one day is more important than another. Others think all days are the same. But each of you should make up your own mind. Any followers who count one day more important than another day, do it to honor their Lord. And any followers who eat meat give thanks to God, just like the ones who don't eat meat. Whether we live or die, it must be for God, rather than for ourselves. Whether we live or die, it must be for the Lord. Alive or dead, we still belong to the Lord. This is because Christ died and rose to life, so that he would be the Lord of the dead and of the living. Why do you criticize other followers of the Lord? Why do you look down on them? The day is coming when God will judge all of us. In the scriptures, God says, I swear by my very life that everyone will kneel down and praise my name. And so, each of us must give an account to God for what we do. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our gospel lesson this morning is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 18, verses 21 to 35. Let us listen for God's word to us this day. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sins against me? Seven times? No, not seven times, Jesus replied, but 70 times seven. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven can be compared to a king who decided to bring his accounts up to date with servants who had borrowed from him. In the process, one of his debtors was brought in who owed him millions of dollars. He couldn't pay, so his master ordered that he be sold along with his wife, his children, and everything that he owned to pay the debt. But the man fell down before his master and begged him, please be patient with me, I will pay it all. Then his master was filled with pity for him and he released him and forgave his debt. But when the man left the king, he went to a fellow servant who owed him a few thousand dollars. He grabbed him by the throat and demanded instant payment. His fellow servant fell down before him and begged him for a little more time. Be patient with me and I will repay it, he pleaded. But his creditor wouldn't wait. He had the man arrested and put in prison until the debt could be paid in full. When some of the other servants saw this, they were very upset. They went to the king and told him everything that happened. Then the king called the man he had forgiven and said, you evil servant, I forgave you that tremendous debt because you pleaded with me. Shouldn't you have mercy on your fellow servant just as I had mercy on you? Then the angry king sent the man to prison to be tortured until he paid his entire debt. That's what my heavenly father will do to you if you refuse to forgive your brothers and sisters from your heart. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, this day may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to you because you are our rock and our redeemer. 
Well, today is Rally Day. It's a wonderful day, is it not? We rejoiced along with the psalmist who declares how good and pleasant it is for brothers and sisters to live together in unity. And that is what we strive for, living together in unity. It is a day today where, as a church family, we gather after typically a long summer and to start a new season. But today, is it not especially poignant because of the impact of the coronavirus on our church life? We haven't gathered normally since, uh, since March, March, really. Even today, look around at everybody gathered here with masks on, socially distancing, and with probably a hand sanitizer in your pocket. And it reminds us that we are not out of the woods yet. I don't know about you, but living with this specter of the coronavirus all these months, it's been painful, and it's been scary, and it's been lonely. It's impacted our families, our jobs. It's been especially hard not to see our church family up close and up with each other, to exchange the hugs that we're used to being able to, to shake hands and friendship, to pass the peace, just, just to support each other face to face. And the loss of this routine of being present in the sanctuary or being together um, and worshiping God has taught us the importance, the importance of what it, being together means and for us. It has been said that about 40% of people in the past six months have experienced some sort of mental health issue, predominantly depression or anxiety. Yes? And there's been a 30% increase in substance abuse or relapses. Some of us, I, I, I would imagine, gathered here have increased health issues. Some of us have gained or lost weight during this time. And some of us are sleeping poorly during this time. I would dare say that each one of us, if we were to go around, could name some struggle or ill effect that you're having as a result of this coronavirus. And in addition to the coronavirus, the social unrest that is plaguing our country these past months. If we didn't know it then, we know it now that we are meant to be together. We thrive and survive through sustained contact and interactions with each other. Our spiritual lives depends on a bit of being together, worshiping together, serving together. That makes us spiritually whole. Look at the Bible for a moment with me, would you? We know the story of Abraham and Sarah, for example. They were set out, they were called by God to go forth from their homeland, but they were not called out for their own purposes. God said, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make you famous. And I will make you a blessing to others. They're not sent out just for their own benefit. They're sent out for our benefit. To, to bless us. And when Exodus tells the story for us of the liberation and the journey of the people of Israel, it's not just for Moses. It's not just for Aaron or Miriam or Joshua. God sends the commandments, the instructions for building the tabernacle, the development of priesthood. Is, and all of this is to create community, to be together, how to live together in a right way. Even Jesus went to the temple. Even Jesus went to the synagogue. And in the story of Acts, it's a story of the spread of what? Not individual people, but, but of the church throughout the land. And the epistles of the New Testament, all those letters. These aren't letters, this is one letter to an individual, but the rest are to churches across the Roman Empire that are growing and, and finding themselves in struggles. Even the book of Revelation that people take and interpret individually, it's not addressed initially to individuals, it's addressed to seven churches, churches. So the power of the Bible is not just for each one of us individually, but 
collectively as a spiritual body. And as we begin our church season, our readings from Matthew and Romans that Cordy read for us earlier, our reminders that how we are to live together, how we can best, one of the best practices we might say now of living together, how we are to strive, how we are, even if we're uh, listening in remotely, to let us enter this new church season, making a commitment that we heard in the messages today, to forgive, to strive to learn how to forgive, and also that willingness to be, be forbearing and not judging or being critical of each other. In our passage from Matthew, Peter, we heard, came to Jesus and says, if someone sins against me, how often should I forgive? Seven times? Now Peter here th is thinking he's being very generous because the rabbi said, if you, you can forgive up to seven, but at, at, if you can, I'm sorry, you can forgive up to three, and then that's it. So Peter is dub more than doubling that amount. Jesus says, no, you must forgive 70 times seven. And in, in, in Peter's mind, an uh, 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 incomprehensible amount of times that must we must forgive. Forgiveness is a serious business. It's not saying that we must be a doormat and let people walk all over us as we forgive. Jesus is talking about our real life here. That forgiveness is a transaction. It recognizes, yes, there's been an offense, but when, a, when it's possible to make amends and then find a way to heal the wound that's been created. So forgiveness calls everyone, the victim as well as the perpetrator, to this transformational space. So Jesus, to enforce this, tries to tell the story of the king who's settling accounts and this servant owes so much money it's an obscene amount how could he ever uh, have to pay back millions and millions of dollars and and probably back in those days it was incredible it was like how he ever had developed such a debt is just it's god's way of telling us that our sometimes the debt is just so outrageous. It can never be repaid back. Our debt to God, it can never be paid back. And but the king is merciful. The king is the sovereign is merciful. He hears the servant's words, the pleas, and he agrees to forgive. He forgives the debt as God forgives our our transgressions. The king forgives the servants. So this next, but this next, but the servant, just forgiven, having this debt lifted from him, you would think he would be grateful. But he goes out, and his fellow servant comes to him who owes him less money, just perhaps a couple thousand dollars, still a large amount, but he but he comes to him to ask forgiveness, and, this, and he for, refuses to forgive. And then the king, in response, is angry. He says, why didn't you forgive like I taught you to forgive? Why didn't you model my generosity in forgiveness? And as a result, this servant is, ta is taken and thrown into prison and says even that the servant is tortured. This, Jesus is painting what it was our world must look like if we don't forgive. We end up in a prison. We end up in, in a prison of our, in, of our hearts. And we don't, and we are tortured by our lack of forgiveness. Pastor Paul Youngji Cho was in a box of con conflict and hatred. This pastor, Yang Ji Cho, is a pastor of one of the largest churches in the world in Korea. And several years ago, as his ministry was becoming international, he told God, I will go anywhere to preach the gospel except Japan. 
He hated the Japanese with a gut level loathing because of what the Japanese troops had done to the Korean people and to members of Yanji Cho's own family during World War II. But he, as he was praying, and this is it's kind of like Jonah, as he was praying not to go, the message still kept coming through very, very clearly. In a, and he finally received an urgent and starkly worded invitation. So Cho felt by God that he was, in fact, called to preach in Japan. He went, but he went with bitterness. And the first speaking engagement was a pastor's conference. A thousand pastors, Japanese pastors, had come to hear him. Cho stood up to speak, but the only thing that could come out of his mouth was, I hate you! I hate you! I hate you! And there, in front of the pastors, he broke down and he wept. He was brimming with a desolation and hatred. He was in his own prison. He was being tortured by his own hatred. And then something happened. One, then another pastor, then eventually all 1,000 pastors stood up. And one by one, they walked up to the Oji Cho. They knelt at his feet and they asked forgiveness for what they and their people had done to him and his people. As this went on, God changed Yan Ji Cho. God touched his heart. God healed him, and then a message came forth from his heart and his mouth. And that message was this. I love you. I love you. I love you. So my friends, to remain, uh, for us to remain sane in these present difficult times, we need to look at forgiveness. We need to practice forgiveness. But along with forgiveness, we need to practice not judging, not being critical of each other. Now Paul addresses the Corinthians as they are judging each other and at the point of tearing each other apart. The so-called strong people in the congregation could apparently eat anything, observe all the days as the same, and perhaps even drink some wine. And the so-called the weak in faith in this congregation, mentioned in the first verse, apparently abstained from meat. They abstained because perhaps it wasn't kosher meat. Perhaps it was meat that had been sacrifice to idols. They observe some days more as special as others, some of the feast days in the Jewish calendar or in the Gentile calendar, and they also abstained from wine. More significant than all these differences was the, the attitudes that were coming from these differences, the judgment. Paul's commands to both groups make it clear that the strong were despising the weak, and the weak were judging and condemning the, the strong. And lost in this was the focus that we are supposed to have as a church, that Jesus is the center of our lives. And all that we do and proclaim is based on Jesus, not whether or not you eat meat or not. So Paul is encouraging the church to be sensitive with each other, not to get caught up in differences. So to survive this time, to thrive, we must practice the same kind of forbearance, the same kind of lack of not, be, not being critical with each other, the different opinions perhaps we have of what's going on in our country, the different some Christians may have about how to interpret scriptures, or the differences some Christians have about clothing or dancing or smoking. All these things we must be in a place of not criticizing one another because each one of us is a servant of Jesus and Jesus will make each one of us stand from our own particular place. So we must love each other more than we love our own theological biases. That's how we honor and love God and each other. The 
There's a verse from Hebrews that I believe will sum this up for us. In Hebrews 10, it says, let us consider how to provoke each other to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, but encouraging one another. So as we start this new season with hopes and visions for our church, still coping with the coronavirus, still dealing with the, the struggles of our nation, trying to find its way, I would recommend that we would commit this the sentiment of this passage, what we heard today, to heart, to our heart and to deed. We will not make criticizing a habit. We will make forgiving a habit deep from our hearts. Let us not neglect to meet with each other, to encourage each other to love and good deeds. Doing this, we will have a blessed future together, to gather together whenever we can, as often as we can. Can we make this our vow to each other from the heart? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor, for that message from the heart. Let us always remember that among all the gifts that God has given us, forgiveness is also a gift. And just like all the other gifts that is given, we have to receive it. So let us forever use that gift of forgiveness that God has given to us. Please join me in the affirmation of faith. To be, to be reconciled, reconciled to God, God is to be sent into, into the world as God's, God's reconciling community, community, to share God's, God's labor of healing, the hostilities which separate, which separate people, people from, from God and from, and from each other. Christ has called the church to his mission and given it the gift of the Holy Spirit. The church follows Christ's pattern in the form of its life and in the method of its action. So to live and serve is to confess Christ as Lord. Good morning, church family. Still on the board here. Happy Rally Day.
They were written and they were prayed over, each one and every one this past week. And now they adorn our communion table so that all are present together, not only here, but remotely together. We celebrate the Lord's Supper. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. It is right to give thanks and praise. Great is the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. In Jesus, born of Mary, your word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. He lived as one of us, knowing joy and sorrow. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, opened blind eyes, and broke bread with outcasts and sinners. Dying on the cross, he gave himself for the life of the world, and raised from the grave, he won for us victory over death. We praise you that Christ now reigns with you, and will come again to make things new. We give you thanks that our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night before he died, took bread. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, broken for you. Do this to remember me. In the same way, after the supper, Jesus took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do so to remember me. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and wine that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your spirit, make us one with all who share this feast, united in ministry in every place. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. Receive who you are, but become who you receive. Now I invite you to take the communion the cup, the bread and the wine, the bread and the juice, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Eat, drink, and know the Lord. Like giving God, you have made us one, one with all the people, people in heaven, heaven and, and on earth. earth. You have, you have fed, us fed us with the bread of life and renewed us for your service. service. Help, Help us to have shared Christ's body and received his cup to be his faithful disciples so that our daily living be a part of the life of your kingdom. And our love be your love, reaching out into the life of the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning, church family. It's Bailey. And Joshua. And Giant. Happy, Happy Rally, Rally Day. Day. At this time, I would ask that those of us who are here as well as at home to take a look at your congregational life section of your bulletin. There's a lot of information in there, but um, I will ask that you read it when you have time. But I will try to highlight a few items that are in here. Um, First and foremost, let me just say, I know I've said it earlier, but I'll say it again. 
what a joy it is to see everybody here and to be able to stand before so many of you. It was not an easy proposition the last couple of months to just stand and speak to three, four people. But we've got a very nice group here today and it makes me so happy to see it. And um, I don't know if those of you at home can see the group that we have here today. But let me say this. We have done a lot of work trying to slowly open back up this church. We've had so many meetings that addressed all the protocols that are necessary to open up a church. But let me assure you, we have even gone beyond the protocols that the state has mandated for us here in this church. So if anyone has got any hesitation as to how serious we're taking things here in this church, we are taking it very serious. And I would like you to really, really think about it as far as coming back to church. I know that it's all up to everyone's time. And we will work with you on that. But I have to assure you that all protocols are in place here for us to, um, to have this service. I also want to let you know that right after the service here today, or what we like to call in recent times our celebration here, we've had communion where we were fed today, and we will also have a little celebration afterwards where we will partake of um, some food stuff. But for those of you who are at home, I can't help you with that. We will partake on your behalf, and it will be well consumed. So I would also like to say a special thank you to the various groups who have worked diligently on committees looking towards opening this church, the session, deacons, everybody work diligently to make what we have taken place here today a possibility. So I thank each and every one of you, and especially on behalf of the session, I thank you. I will go on to say that um, looking at our bulletin, please remember to send in your offering, your tithes. Um, as you may notice, we're not going around with, a, with the plate um, to, to take up collection, but please um, take care of that. We also would like to let you know that the food pantry is also taking in food stuff. Glenn has been very busy together with Brian, shopping for stuff, but the money that you have sent in they go, they shop for stuff, they take it over to the food pantry. So that is alive and well. I also would like to let you know that um, Sunday school, we haven't spoken much about Sunday school today. Uh, Christian Ed is looking into that at the moment and by next week, we'll have something to tell you along the line of Sunday school. One thing I would really like to let you know is that um, all the things that we're used to doing and planning, we are moving forward with it. The next thing on our list is World Communion Sunday, then we have Reformation Sunday, we have the Thanksgiving basket project, projects from the deacons, we have Christmas projects, so the church is alive and working and doing things even though we're not meeting as a group, large group. So that I would like to let you know. Again, as I mentioned, the alarm system will be installed on Tuesday. I would also like to send out a happy anniversary greetings to Steve and Barbara Rivera. 
that's our church secretary and um, her husband. So, with this being said, I think this covers everything that we need to speak about. If there's anything I might have missed, you can direct me at this point. I think that is everything that we have at this point. Let us sing our closing hymn number 591, Halle, Halle, Hallelujah. The lyrics and the music is on pages 9 and 10 in your bulletin. And for those of you who would like to stand and sing it and jump around a little, feel free. Hallelujah. 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 